Hey everyone, so we're at uh, FQT Farm this week and digging deeper and I'm with Catherine. She's the head grower here and this is the amazing green that Catherine and her team have been growing and we're discussing, is it worth it? Is it worth it to go through the trouble in the late fall to plant all of these, to save up the space in the greenhouse, to perhaps invest, to get some of the equipment to, to do this and also frame it in a way that is it worth it when it's well done? Doing it is one thing, but doing it well is, in my opinion, another, it's another discussion. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? <laughs> I think for us it's definitely worth it. We've been uh, calculating uh, the cost and our sales, and we see that we're making a profit each week out of the winter. So it's definitely profitable to grow vegetables in the winter for us right now. Uh, but we, it took us many years to get to that point. So we mm. did, you remember it, yep. we did lots of experiments to be able to have a greenhouse like this in December that's full of vegetables ready to harvest. We didn't get to that point in one year, but now that we have the right techniques, the right calendar, the right dates, we know exactly what to grow, when to grow it. Now it's really profitable to do vegetables in the winter in our farm. Mm. Yeah, and there's been a big evolution because if people don't know this, La, when Catherine was hired some years ago, we started to get more serious about winter farming. I was doing some 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 trials and error, but it it was uh, never so uh, rigorous. Catherine is a very very rigorous grower, very uh, very clean, very sharp, and and we started to get some really nice results. But uh, I had seen some good stuff at the stone barns and he was feeding the restaurant there. And I know that Elliot Coleman was behind some of that at one point, but I had never seen it done so well of, of you know, that of what we do here. And, and again, so coming back to the question, is it worth it? I think doing it well is worth it. Doing it halfway when you don't get all, you know, the, the, the it's not, it's not um, what's the word like? There's, there's holes, it's, it's not so dense, the, you know? Yeah, the density isn't good. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, I think the secret to our success here is definitely planification. You need to be super early when planning to do winter vegetables. You cannot uh, wake up in October and think, oh, what should I do for the winter season? It's, you're, it's, you're yeah, dead. You're dead. No. It's, it's too, late. too late. Too late. So what I do here is I'll start planning the winter season in April. I'll order my seeds for the winter season. And when comes September, I'm already planting crops and already starting to grow the winter mm. vegetables. And that's how I can get full mature plants in November when light is so low that you, you cannot expect any plant growth. So you need to be ready at that point to be starting to harvest on your crops and not starting to plant because you are too late. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, yeah. What are, what are the, uh, the biggest customers? Hey, that would be a good question, Chris. Biggest customers, you know, not just of this farm, but in your mind, where does this fit in to the whole, you know, local food scene? I think the early adopters are definitely the restaurants and the high-end chefs because they see the value in these vegetables. They see how special they are and they really want to encourage uh, local produce. So I think they are a really good place to start selling too. So you can offer your winter vegetables to them first. But then I think also just general consumers are starting to be interested in these vegetables, but they're a bit behind the chefs. So the chefs are starting the yeah. wave and then I think uh, the general public is starting to slowly to be interested in them, but it's still the beginning. So it's not really well known yet that we are growing vegetables in the winter this way. Yeah, It's still new. And farmer's market could go on through the winter. Uh, here I know we're selling also through a, 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 a growers co-op that is really focused on all those root vegetables. And so connecting with them and adding this really makes sense. Yeah, a big thing for us is that uh, market are 
only seasonal right now. So our farmer's market will be closed in the winter. Mm -hmm. So the thing we need to change is that farmer's market in Nordic climate start to be year, year round, round and not only in the summer to help uh, selling these vegetables. The one big thing for us is that we're working so much in the summer and now we're also working in the winter. So we need to think about what balance we want in our life. And what I see from working in the winter is that everything slows down so much that it's not a lot of work doing these vegetables in the winter because the plant growth is so slow that you're really just harvesting and selling, but there's not a lot of other tasks you need to be doing. So it's a really different pace than uh, from the summer. And the other thing we need to be working on is decreasing the pressure on the summer production now that we have so much revenue in the winter. Mm. So we need to um, leave the summer burnout mindset and start to be really have a more balanced workload throughout the year. Flattening the curve. Yes. <laughs> We've heard that one before. No, I agree. And that's what... I think is the game changer is to have enough production in the winter to raise the, the overall income. And so then you can compensate. Um, and also we can say that, you know, there's not that many growers that do it. So you're, you have an edge, you know, you're out competing. Yeah. Bigger, bigger farms, mechanized farm. You're really creating a niche for yourself. I think that's important also. Yeah, it's really exciting to be able to sell these vegetables in the winter when you're really alone selling yeah. these. So you don't have to compete with anyone else. And our customers are really exciting to see this much diversity and freshness in the winter that is local. So that's a big plus for our winter production. It's also very possible to take a month break and still have all of this happening. Like that's what I'm doing at the old mill. So we've planted everything. It's all established. We're harvesting till Christmas and you know there's a lot of opportunity to sell these greens up the way to Christmas. In January, we're still in low light condition. Things are not really growing. I'm just kind of keeping everything afloat. Um, we're going to have one person coming in once a week to just check perhaps water if necessary, but probably not. And then February, the light kicks in and then we're harvesting again. And what we've harvested in November and December starts to regrow. So in December, it's like a second phase. So I still get four or five weeks off and it's just like money in the bank because it's just, it's kind of like having all these greens in the, in the fridge. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of stored. You yeah. Know? Same for us. We take a good three weeks off in the winter. We don't even have someone coming to the farm. So the farm is really left behind and we all go in, into our families for the Christmas season and we're not at the farm at all and there's really no problem because everything is so slow with the low light conditions that it just stays there and we come back it's the same and we start growing again. It's pretty cool. Profit margins, summer versus winter. Well, well definitely uh, you need to subtract the fact that there's not a lot of labor that goes into the winter except for the harvest. Once it's established it's kind of done. Um, so that offsets a lot of it. We're also, we're heating minimally. Both of us are heating minimally around five degrees Celsius. So that's, I don't know, in Fahrenheit. It's like 40. 40-ish Fahrenheit. There's a cost there. Yeah, right now for this greenhouse, it costs about $50 per week to heat at that level. Mm. So it's not that expensive, yeah. but you need to take that into account. Yeah. 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 So it's just like, it's, it's, it's obviously not like, you know, the big bumper crops of, of uh, spring and summer where you have, you know, peppers and, and tomatoes and all these high, you know, revenue crops that kick in. But let's say you have the storage crops, then you have these greens and you have a market and you're still making good cash for yeah. sure. For sure, because the costs are so low. Really, yeah. there's no other spending than the, um, your labor and your energy, but otherwise mm. you have no spending. So you need to keep those costs low because these sales are not that high um, um, comparing to the summer crops. Mm. 
But there's really a way to make good revenues with this strategy, I think. What do you think, Catherine, in your experience all these years doing this, what is your biggest recommendation to someone that's kind of starting and has that in mind? To start growing vegetables in the winter? I think my biggest recommendation is definitely to have the right calendar, planting calendar. It's what I found with my experience is that is the one factor that will define your success. So if you plant at the right date, you will have good harvest. If you plant too late, which a lot of people I see doing, mm -hmm. you will uh, fail with your winter production. And how do you get the right date? You need to have a good reference. We give one in our book, we give our planting calendar from Ferme Quatre Temps, so it's a good starting point. But then again, if you have other market gardeners in your area or who are doing market winter market gardening, you could start with their calendar, but you need to have a good reference to start with, and then you adjust from what you observe in your context. Both Catherine and I were really passionate about this. This has been a long-term project for us together. We have a book together that you know displays all of our research that we've done here. And we also have a movie that we're in it mm -hmm. that's coming out in French. It's really exciting. And I know you're giving a lot of workshops this Uh, this winter, I don't know if you want to say where you are this winter. Yeah, I'll be speaking about what we do here in the winter. I'll be at Nofa Vermont in February. I also be at Passa in February, and we'll both be at Guelph Conference in, in January. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. So if you want to connect, uh, you know, the Market Gardener Institute is also giving a class on this. Check out the info. But I think it's really exciting and. There's been a lot of work done in the past on this, but it's like anything else, it needs to be renewed. Mm -hmm. uh, new people coming in, new energy, new insights about how to do this. And I think that's, uh, that's the future of small scale farming is reinventing the wheel. I like it. Yeah. And also if you want to uh, see Catherine touring the farm, giving all, you know, all the dis displaying, you know, telling about what she does here, you can check out this video.